How's it going everybody? Squeezy Down Toy here. And welcome back to part two of getting a blender file in a Skater XL as a skatable map. In this part we'll be taking a look at colliders and grinds. So in our last part we set everything up to be imported automatically with a mesh collider, which is fine for a lot of stuff, but for things like rails we need to be a little more specific with the colliders that we use. To make a rail grind as smoothly as possible it should be made out of capsule colliders. So the first step that we're going to be doing is setting something up to grind. Before we get into too much detail, let's go ahead and start with something very easy. We're going to begin with this curb object that I've created here. Now we're going to want the whole curb to be grindable. So we can go ahead and create one spline that will make this entire curb one grindable object. Step one is going to be creating a new layer. So we're going to come up here to top right. We're going to click on default, add layer, under layer 12, we will create a layer called grindable. Now I can go ahead and click on my curb object again and set the layer to grindable. This has defined this full curb as a grindable object. The next step is to go ahead and change our collider type. Now in the case of this curb, we can actually leave it as a mesh, but we could also switch it over to a capsule. For actually for this curb, I am going to leave it as a mesh. I think it'll be okay. Thick objects like this are okay as mesh colliders. The next step is to create the grind itself. So in our sample scene hierarchy, we're going to right click. We're going to create empty. We're going to name this grinds, capital G with an S. It has to be just like this, with this capitalization and spelling. Next, we're going to create a game object within that. And we're going to call this grind spline. Now, all of our grind splines this is called the Hondoons technique, and using the Hondoons technique, all of our grind splines need to be titled grind spline. I'm actually going to set my grinds to 0, 0, 0, much like we do with as many things like this. It's good to keep it centered. Now we're going to go ahead and move this object to our curb. What I'm doing is I'm holding V and using the move tool to lock it to a vertex. So I hold V and move it and lock it to this vertex and then I'll move it over a little bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and center our grind spline object. This is the parent of our grind spline. Within this, we are now going to create another empty and this we can just leave called game object. This is going to be defining point A of our grind. So we'll go ahead and put it on the end of our curb. The next thing is to create another game object. So we can just go ahead and duplicate this one and we'll set it at the other end. This is point B. It doesn't matter what order we do these in, but as long as this green arrow is facing up, then this will define the grind spline between point A and point B. Now the skater is being told I can grind this grindable object from point A to point B or point B to point A. Something else we can do is we can go ahead and title this grind spline and then we can add a tag. So for instance, I can add the concrete tag. Our three options are concrete, metal, and wood. This is what will define the sound that our curb makes. So in this case, I wanted to make a concrete grind sound. Okay, so our curb is all set up to be a grindable object. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what it would entail to make a rail. We'll go ahead and go with this simple flat rail. Now in this case, we do not want to use a mesh collider. So I'm going to remove that component. What we want to do is use capsules for rails because mesh colliders with rails, it's easy for the skater to fall through. If there's legs as well, such as with this battleship, there will also be hitching where the legs are. So we want to avoid all of that by going with a simple capsule rail setup. <clears throat> In this case, because I have these bevels as well, I may want to create a couple extra capsules to help really define the shape of my rail. So I'll go ahead and start setting those up. So the first step is I'm going to right click on my flat rail, create empty, and I want to go ahead and center this right in the middle of our rail. This is going to be my grindable capsule. Capsule colliders are primitive colliders that are in the shape of, you guessed it, a capsule. And we want to try and use these sort of primitive colliders as often as possible. Now I can go ahead and add component and add a capsule collider. I'm going to go ahead and click on this button here to adjust 
the collider by dragging with these little box icons here. And it's important to go ahead and hold the Alt button when doing this as much as possible so that I scale both sides at the same time. Something that's important to keep in mind is this center number needs to be 0, 0, 0. And the game object itself needs to be right in the middle of our grindable object. If, for instance, I accidentally move the center down, now the center of my capsule is down here, the skater will try and kind of migrate himself down to the capsule, which we don't want. We want both the center of the capsule and the center of the game object itself to be as close to 0, 0, 0 in reference to the flat rail as possible. I can use the perspective mode and the isometric mode to get different things. In this case, I'll switch to isometric mode to help me get a very perfect view of the rail from above to line these up properly. It's okay to have a little bit of extra collider on the bottom since that's something we won't be skating, but it's really important to have the top as flush as possible with the rail itself. As you can see, the capsule collider is flush on the sides, the top, which is going to be our grindable surface, and we do not want the top floating above the visual mesh because that's what creates floaty grinds and it comes all the way to the ends okay so the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to set this to grindable only this capsule is going to be set to grindable and i'm actually just going to go ahead and call this flat rail grind collider that'll help me keep my hierarchy straight something else we can do to help simulate some realism is we can come to our project and I'm going to go ahead and right click, create, and we're going to create a physics material. I'm going to call this grind. And we're going to come over here and set our dynamic friction to 4, and our static friction to 0, bounciness to 0. Friction combine will be, friction combine should be set to multiply, and our bounce combine should be set to minimum. Now we can come back over to our grind collider, and we can set our material to this grind material. Now our rail will have a little bit of friction and the skater will not just slide infinitely at the exact same speed, but will gradually lose speed as they slide the surface of the rail. Now I'm just going to go ahead and create the capsules for the legs and this little angled bit here. Okay, so I've gone ahead and gotten my flat rail all set up. So as you can see, the rail itself has two capsule colliders, which are the legs. And then I have the collider that is the grind, which is the only collider that will be set to the grindable layer. And the only collider that has this grind material set. And then I have this and this, which are what make up these angled bits, which is simply a game object rotated with a capsule on it. A couple things to keep in mind are to always use primitive colliders as often as possible, which are box and capsule colliders, as well as wheel and sphere colliders, I believe, are also options. Another thing to keep in mind is when using our grind collider, it is imperative to keep our center at 0, 0, 0 and make sure that it is aligned with the middle of the rail. This is a very important step, and if we miss that, our skater will have issues trying to grind this rail. So now that we've got all of that set up, we can go ahead and create a new grind spline. So I'm gonna create empty, and once again, we're going to be doing grind spline. And I'm gonna call this metal, and then we can also give this another tag, and this is just going to be for organization's sake, we'll call this flat rail. And we can go ahead and rename this one, and we'll call that curb. This will just keep things a little straighter when working with our map. Now we're going to go ahead and move this empty over. And we're going to align it with the center of our rail. And then once again, we're going to create another empty. And finally, our point B empty. And now our rail is ready to grind. 
something to keep in mind as well is that it's nice to try and keep our grinds floating a little bit above our rail. In the past I said to set them into the rail, but I have learned that it's actually better to have the grind float just the tiniest bit above your collider. And to help prevent floaty looking grinds, setting our collider up properly with our rail so that it's very flush, or even we could set our collider the tiniest bit down will help prevent a floaty grind appearance. Okay. Now we can go ahead and move on to doing the rest of our park. We've gone ahead and covered flat rails and flat objects. A ledge is the same but with a box collider or a custom collider which you can learn about in my custom colliders tutorial. But let's move on to this kinked rail which is slightly different although not much more difficult to handle. Now I'll go ahead and set up the colliders really quickly. Okay, so as you can see when I click on my battleship object, this is comprised of three colliders that have been angled. The first is this capsule collider in the middle, and then the second is a capsule collider, the same one actually, I duplicated and then rotated to align with the rail, and then the third is that same as before and just rotated the opposite direction and aligned with the other side of the rail. Now, as tempting as it is to just use a mesh collider for this whole rail, it's actually very important to use capsule colliders, especially on any rails with kinks. This spot on a mesh collider will create a lot of issues with hangups, same as with an inverted kink like a donkey dink or a DFD kink. The final thing to keep in mind is that I've actually done the legs as a mesh collider. This is okay, we're not going to be grinding the surface and it's simply there for the skateboard to run into more than anything. So I don't mind using a mesh collider for the legs, it's really the grind surface being smooth that's important, which is why we have this set with capsule colliders. Where this would kink with a mesh collider, it will not kink with the capsule. Now we're going to go ahead and create the spline for this. So just like before, we're going to create an empty and set up our splines. Now in this case, we are actually going to do one thing slightly differently. We're going to go ahead and create an empty, our game object here, and we're going to bring this out, and we're going to align it with the end of our rail here, hovering just above the tip. And we're going to duplicate that, and this time we're going to set it at the kink point. Rather than going directly to the other side ledge, we need to define that this is a point that the skater will need to go up, and then he will change positions here, and then we will duplicate this object, bring it all the way over to the next kink point where it goes from flat to down and place another spline in that position. And then finally we're going to place a final spline at the very end of the down. This is the same for any kinked or curved rail. Anywhere that the direction changes we need to define that with a game object. And perfect, we've set up our grind spline for our battleship. Now this is a grindable ready to go object. So the final object I'm going to cover in this tutorial is going to be this rainbow rail. Now this is something I could do with capsule colliders and probably should do with capsule colliders. But let's be all honest with ourselves, nobody wants to sit here and set up 35 capsule colliders at different angles to make this rainbow rail a grindable object. So we're going to be lazy and we're going to take our rainbow, which I've separated into rainbow grind and rainbow legs, and I'm going to take the rainbow grind and I'm going to set that to grindable with the mesh collider enabled. We're going to go ahead and set the material. Now one thing to keep in mind is that rainbows don't always grind the best with a friction material. I'll try it on this one, but sometimes you may experience that if it's too steep, it will work a lot better without the friction material. And now we're going to go ahead and spline this, which is the hard part. So we'll go ahead and create our empty. I can go ahead and use the vertex alignment tool by holding V again and clicking to sort of get that a little closer to where I want it without drag and dropping it a thousand times in the map and then get it more dialed and as always we're gonna go ahead and create our empty 
And now for the fun part, which is going to be creating this spline with each game object at a time. So we'll hold V to make our lives a lot easier and we'll place our first one here. And then we'll duplicate. Go ahead and switch views so that just it's a little easier. And I'm just gonna duplicate and move these to try and cover as much of the curve as possible. And there we go, that's not too bad. If we were to take a look at all of these, you can very clearly see that it's not exactly the most perfect and I can change that a little bit. The way I've changed these icons is simply clicking this button and it gives you a nice little visual representation of where all of your spline objects are. But hopefully, hopefully, all of these splines will help create a smooth rainbow grind. The final thing I'm going to cover in this tutorial is a pad like this. Now, we need to make a box collider for each edge of this pad. Making this whole pad grindable will mess it up. You won't be able to manual along the middle. Your skater will try to grind the whole surface, which we don't want. So, simply put, we'll create an empty. And we'll give this empty a box collider. And just like before with our rails, we're going to go ahead and align this. And we're going to click on this button and set our collider to where we want it. As before, we don't want this center value to change, so don't just drag one side or the other. If it's not laying up how you want it, make it the size you need, and then adjust it with the game object itself, not the center of the collider. Something else to keep in mind when doing ledges like this is that the more narrow it is like this, the better. If it's too wide, the skater will view this as a grindable area as well, which we don't want. That's what creates those weird looking grinds very far away from the grindable edge of a feature. So that's a pretty good box collider for our grind. We'll go ahead and set our material. And we're going to set our box collider to the grindable layer. And we can actually leave our mesh collider on our box itself because that's what will allow us to manual across. But then when we're near this box collider, this skater will use that as a grindable object. And I'm going to go ahead and create our empty. Put it in the grinds folder. We'll call this the appropriate name. As always, we're going to line this up with the edge that it's going to be grinding on. And then we'll create our empties. And now to save ourselves a little bit of time, we'll select this and duplicate it and we'll select this and duplicate it and then holding control I'll select both of those duplicates and just scooch it over and that'll save me a bunch of time I don't have to recreate that grind all over again to if I wanted to add grinds on these edges I would have to do the exact same thing create another box collider create a new grind but for the sake of this tutorial not taking a year and a half I'm not going to do that and that's all we'll be covering in today's tutorial. Thanks for watching guys, and I hope that this has helped you learn how to set up your grinds properly. In the next and final tutorial of this small mini series, we'll go ahead and revisit texturing our map. Thanks so much for watching and have a wonderful day.